Hey y'all, welcome to uh, Willow Tree Woodworking. So I've gotten a lot of requests on how I do my canvases uh, for laser burning on the X-Tool D1 10 watt laser. So I thought I'd make a short video, show you guys how, uh, how I do it, what my process is, and how I set up my files. Let's go take a look, just kind of like at some of the images. All right, so here we are. Here's uh, essentially my canvas that I uh, basically put two coats on. I do my first coat in high gloss white, and then I do my second coat in high gloss black. This is just very simple, um, very easy to do. You uh, spray your first one and then let it dry and spray your next one, wait about 30 minutes between. I won't go into great detail on that because there's a lot of different videos out there on how people are already doing this. So as you can see, uh, this is kind of a black and white image right here. This one is a multicolor, and if you want to do multicolors, there's different settings that you can use. Uh, you have to kind of play around with that a little bit. And then here's the third one. This is also a multicolor, but using a little different setting to get a little bit more of the red to show up versus the black. And then full on color canvas. So you're not just limited to doing black and whites. If you want to do different colors, you can try different colors. Um, it's just a matter of playing around and, and see what you like. So let's get into uh, the program and let me show you how I actually set it up. All right, so here we are in Lightburn. Uh, some of you may not use Lightburn, you may use LaserBox. I'm sure that you can uh, find ways to actually convert this file over. Um, I'll post this file underneath the comments for anybody that wants to grab onto it and use it. So, so basically if we zoom in here, you'll see I have set this up to run in Atkinson. Atkinson's, Dither, Stucky, Jarvis, and Grayscale. Now I'm using the same image for all of them. Uh, note here at the top and throughout all of them, I'm using 6,000 speed and 50 through 75% power. And this is 6,000 millimeters per minute. If you look over here, you'll see how I actually have those files set up. You can go in and adjust these, play around with these however you like. So I go into one of these. Let's take a look at the settings on here. So here's my settings. You'll see up here at the top, I got 6,000 speed millimeters per minute, 65% power. You can either do error assist or no error assist. Sometimes I find it works better without air assist, but that's something you can play around with and try. Bi-directional scanning is on. I have 5% over scanning. I always do 318 DPI. Now the scan angle, that's kind of interesting. Some people like to use zero, some people like to use 45. I've tried both. I've had really good results with most of, uh, most of my images. Typically 45 is better, um, but sometimes if you're you find that your laser skips or something happens to it, uh, you'll get these really weird lines across where when you do it with a zero angle, you can actually go in and fade those lines out a little bit more and a little bit easier. You'll see down here in the image mode, I've chosen Jarvis for this first one, and you'll see that I'm gonna go through and I've run through Atkinson, Dither, Stucky, Jarvis, and I've also done grayscale. So now the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up our laser. So let's turn on our laser. Let's move our canvas over here to any kind of position. Let's get our adjustment going. And here's what I find kind of a better result. I move that adjustment right down so that on the frame itself. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. It's sitting right on the frame versus the canvas. If I move it over on top of the canvas, it actually has a tendency to sink a little bit more just because the canvas is kind of flexible. As you can see, you're actually going to get a pretty uneven burn now. So always when you're setting your canvas, always set it on the frame first. All right, so let's go in and set. 
Put the laser up. And right now all we're doing is getting our laser set up the way that we want to burn. Lock it in place. Lift your arm up. Now, let's go in and center this. You know, and I, lot of, I know a lot of people use uh, different settings, whether they want to use absolute coordinates, current position, that kind of thing. I like to use current position for this. Uh, the first thing that I do is I actually home my laser first, just to make sure that you know, everything is set kind of the standard first. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to set it to home. I'm going to let it move back to its home position. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to move it to exactly kind of where I want it to be. Try not to use your hands to move it around. Try and use your tools. So we're just going to jog it over here a bit. I'm going to bring it down a bit. And we'll let it sit right there. Once it gets back to where it stops, that's where I'm going to start to line up my canvas. So I'm going to move my canvas over, and I'm going to put it so that those lines are just on the outside. Line it up best I can, and you'll notice I do have a grid on here, so I can actually use that grid to see how well of a line I get there, and how well of a alignment I get. Now I'm going to hit the frame button again. You'll notice it is framing just outside that canvas. It's exactly what I want. So, let's go take a look at the preview here. Let's see how long this is going to actually take to burn. Up here, I'm going to move over to the preview button. All right, let's take a look here. This says two hours and 58 minutes. So to burn this entire test is going to take about three hours. Now I think we all know with light burn, whenever you use light burn, it's probably going to add about another hour or so. So I'm going to estimate this is probably going to take about four hours. So we're going to go and let this run. And we'll come back and we'll take a look and see how it turns out. All right, y'all, here we are out checking out on the canvas to see how it's doing. Um, it's currently burning through. It's getting almost to the end of the first set under Atkinson, 6,050 to 75. And you can see that's left to right. So that's at 50%, 60%, 65, 70, and 75. So let's come back and we'll take a look and see once it gets into the dither mode. All right, y'all, here we are, back checking it out. Let's see how it's going through. We are now doing dither. 50%, 60%, 65, 70, and 75. Coming along nicely. All right, y'all, so as you can probably see, I'm getting some really funky lines on these. Um, so I decided halfway through this, I'm gonna turn on my air assist. We'll let it run through the rest and let's see how it does. Alright y'all, so now you can see that we're getting into the grayscale. The grayscale virtually does nothing when it comes to engraving on canvas like this. All right, so here we are. We're back at the photos, back at our canvas. You can see that we're all done. So let's get a closer look here. All right, y'all. So let's go in and take a look at these. 
So this first row, this is Atkinson, and it is done at 6,000 millimeters a minute between 50% and 75% power. Now, if you look closely, you can actually see those lines that are kind of in there. And that's from doing it on a zero degree angle. Next row down we have is the dither. 50%, 6,000 millimeters a minute. 50 to 70%, 75% power. Now, right about here is when I turned on the air assist. So you can see like down here, in these images, this is where the air assist comes on. Now, even though it looks like it's all faded, it looks like it's all dirty and gray and everything, we're gonna clean it up so you can actually see what that looks like. And you can see down here at the bottom, based on how I actually did this image, grayscale did absolutely nothing. All right, so here we are back at our image after we've gone in and cleaned it all up. And if some of you are wondering how I actually clean my images, I actually rinse them under the sink. I use a paper towel and I just lightly uh, rub them off, rub all the dust and the soot and everything off versus uh, taking a rag or anything like that and just kind of wiping it. So I find I get better results that way. So I think looking at these images, I mean, typically when I do Jarvis, Jarvis usually turns out the best. And so if I kind of turn around here and I go back to uh, my original photos, these were all done with Jarvis. These are all done at 6,000 millimeters per minute, and they are all done around 65 to 70% power. And you can see those all turned out pretty nice. So, let's go back here. Now I think, based on just this little test that I've done, Jarvis and Stucky didn't really turn out so well. However, dither, around 65 to 70, actually 70 to 75 percent, did pretty well. Same with the Atkinson. Not too bad. So there you go. That's my test. Well, y'all, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, please look in the comments for this uh, for a link to this file. If you want to test it out yourself, play around. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. Hope you all enjoy. Thanks for watching.